How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Van Chats. I'm sitting here with Hayden McCormick. Um, he's currently in Girona, Spain. How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> I feel a bit bad because I'm actually like late to the Zoom call. Oh, dude. Like, well, see, like, like <laughs> well, you're the one. You're the one doing me a favor. So it's like you're the talent, you know. Like it's just like you're fashionably late. You're like the Instagram model that shows up late to our shoot. You know, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, <laughs> I was just like out on the mountain bike before. I actually did the uh, like sea otter course. Yeah, yeah. I like, no, I got something gone today, but like, don't know what it is. And I'm like, <laughs> no, you've got nothing gone. You never have anything gone. And then I got back. <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah man well dude i'm glad that you jumped on and and yeah let's just like dive into like how the virus has been for you i mean i guess you guys in europe are getting you guys have curfew and stuff but let's let's kind of dive into like what trainings look like i mean i i saw you on a video with lachlan morton doing badlands like that looked pretty dope so let's just dive in like what's going on right now for 2020 for hayden um yeah you're well this last week, it, I feel like it's um, kind of gone to that next level of like stuff's actually becoming a problem now, like for me personally, rather than just sort of like the the pandemic itself. So oh, shit. we have to be um, the curfews 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. Yeah. So, um, yeah, obviously you have to be at your house for that. And then uh, restaurants and cafes are closed or doing takeaway. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of like, I mean, that's not a huge problem, but like, yeah, <laughs> it's like a very first world problem, you know, but very, kind of very like, first world. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, also just from yesterday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, it's kind of like a lockdown. So yeah. you're not meant to ride. Um, I think it's like in your town zone, which is like more or less 5k. Jeez. Um, but I've kind of been like sneaking out in the bush. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I heard like early on, I think Taylor Finney was like almost got like he got warned for riding out of his zone. And yeah, I mean, it's a hard one with these pandemics because it's like, yeah, you have to have rules for like the vast majority of people, which are actually obviously good. But then it's like common sense just doesn't come into it. So it's like when you're in the bush, it's like you're literally by yourself or with one other in fresh air for like four hours and you don't see a human. There's like, at the same time you're allowed to walk around town in a group of six you know oh, so man. it's like it's kind of annoying that you're sort of breaking a rule but it's like wow well, yeah. well hopefully hopefully no spanish police really listen to this and they like come raging <laughs> just like break yeah, the because I, I feel like be, i feel yeah. like with some of these things they take they take certain things a little too seriously like you know i'll get buzzed by a car all day but if i like so much as roll a stop sign here in the states like i'll have a cop straight in my ass like just grilling you yeah. so so yeah well, you I could... that classic guy that like or just like he'll was, he was look on your driver and see like you've been riding just he'll just like blow you up on problem, social media you know? oh like, yeah no we've had bro, we've had some of that you don't like, even live in this country like stay out of it oh man well i bet it's even worse for you guys because i mean you guys are you know at the top of the ranks and so you got tons of masters dudes following you and then you have you trolls also classic, following like, you dude, you're meant to be a role model yeah. <laughs> so, so anyways, so let's dive into it, dude. So like, it's starting to get a bit grim for 2020. What's, uh, what's it kind of looking like, I guess, going into, you know, 2021, like any teams, anything cool going on? Um, Cause man, I feel moment, like, I feel like you're so underrated, man. Like I just like looked up your Wikipedia and I know you just from like, word of mouth and just watching and reading and like i'm a huge fan of like the oceanic scene for like time trialing and all that kind of stuff the commonwealth games and like diving into that but like i look i look at your stuff i mean first the king of the mountains classification of tour of utah third in the national championship time trial uh what was that behind uh well i know hamish what was it 2019 hamish didn't win so that's second for hamish and then who won i think patrick bevan won there you go. Yeah. So you're you're behind two dudes who are pretty legit. Um, I don't know where. Yeah, I mean it's pretty like it's it's a weird sport in the fact that like like um, sorry you mentioned like the king of the mountain that and that kind of like only come about because like Chris Harper was like had like low iron and stuff and like basically it checked out of the race so it was kind of like a free for all. 
And then so it's like, it's a weird sport in the fact that like I went in like the same as if I was riding for Chris or myself, you know? Yeah. And then just if you take this path, you can get a result or this path and you've just like, no one's noticed, but you're still the same, the same person. Yeah. And I think the hard thing in cycling is getting recognized for like, um, I guess being a teammate and that's sort of, I guess, story of my life a little bit. Like, um, like when I first came over to Europe and went to Lotto, I had like a super good year. Um, but I was kind of too like naive to even realize, you know, like yeah. I remember when I turned up, I was like, fuck, you got to win like five races, man. Like, go <laughs> for it, like all this shit. Yeah. And now I look back, I'm like, man, you were good that year. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I just didn't really know. And um, in the second year, um, this is kind of just an example of how the years can fly by. But the second year, I, I was like, right, like, I'm going to do it this year. Like, quit the track team, like, full focus. <laughs> and I went shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I kind of, like, that was the big mistake was, like, leaving the track team because I lost – like that support and all my friends like because yeah. i was living with them and i kind of and you like, were just gonna go like, full bore roadie right and that was yeah like, and i was like to the point like sometimes i'd be getting like trains to the race yeah like which looking back is just come on um and then yeah and then another shit yeah the third year but then like yeah it was all looking pretty good with one pro um <laughs> and yeah. then yeah, obviously, like, that was a sick year that first year. It was actually, like, super fun. Um, and I was doing, like, the teammate thing there. And then, obviously, like, with the sponsors and stuff. Um, that sort of checked out, like, late December that year. Um, and then, yeah. And then it's sort of, like, it's crazy to think, like, yeah, looking back, how just fast the years can go. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's kind of a funny sport because you can be a good teammate all year. And then it's like, oh, shit, I need to find a team. Like, what results do you have? And you're like, well, kind of nothing. But, like, I was super good this day. But, like, yeah. like, what am I going to write down? Like, oh, my teammate won. And I was, like, 80th, but I was the man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it was, like, it's kind of a weird sport for, for that. Um, well, unless you're, like, a, what? Like, I mean, I guess nowadays, unless you're, like, a Michael Morkoff or a Daniel Oss. Yeah. Even then, like, Daniel Oss is not getting the credit he deserves right now. Um, Cause it's oh, there's, like, there's so many guys that are like super underrated for their job yeah um, but that's kind of like you just have to accept that that cycling like it used to it used to crack me so so much like yeah to the point i was like stressed about it and now i'm just like well like they ever want me or they don't like yeah. i can't there's nothing i can do about it for sure, um, for sure but i guess what's most frustrating was like even like this year because like the last sort of four years I've always had like back issues like and I never really thought they were that much of a problem but just like to the point like my back would just get tired and I just have no power and that was all that was even like at Utah like I just go for the medium days because I know like I can get through with the back I mean the big mountain days it's like the back would go and I'd just be like oh, too much yeah. um but now I've got that sorted so like um yeah I feel like I've gone up like 10 different levels um, but then sort of like with COVID this year, haven't been able to do anything, but I've taken like quite a lot of confidence from that going into next year and like all my power numbers and everything are like right up there. So, well, a lot better than they were. So, right um, yeah, fingers crossed for, for next year, right whatever that so, so, so is that, was that black spoke is coming back for next year? Is that the deal? Uh, or is it kind of like you're in the talks with just kind of everybody and anybody? Just kind of hope something works yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I think chances are I end up in Black Spoke. Yeah. But like obviously I'm, I'm open to, to other options. Yeah, yeah, right on. Play, play fair, yeah. yeah, no, no, that makes sense. I mean, I think, I think even Black Spoke would understand that. Um, so let's kind of dive into uh, Badlands, which is kind of what kind of turned me back on to you, man. Because like I... I knew of you, I've, I've known about you. Um, but then I think it's insane. All these racers that are just like, oh, it's 2020. I still need to ride. Um, let's do something crazy. So when, how did that decision come about? When did you decide to do that? Why did you decide to do that? And how underprepared were you for that? Because I know you could ride the mileage. I know you could ride the Ks. But like, there's so much that comes into it just with the uh, packing and, and so on and so forth. 
Yeah, <laughs> it was actually really funny because I was just um, like I had zero ambition to like. I actually put my hand up and say it like last year, especially. I just say these guys are idiots. Like it's just yeah, for, people for sure. That, like it's for people that can't ride fast and a shit, yeah. and they just like they're just gonna do something no one else wants to do just to get a bit of recognition. Yeah, and, and it, like, it kind of like I was definitely one of them guys. <laughs> and I would be, in, I would argue with it. It, it was kind of like that in a way, yeah. like there was guys who had the mental capacity to just outlast somebody on the bike. And I mean, the chafing and every, like they were willing to fucking bleed in their chamois to get across the line. And and it's one of those things like anyone can actually do one if they're just willing to like keep riding. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas like, like, no, not everyone can race because they're just, they're just dropped and they're, they're out. For sure. So yeah, how it came about was like, I was just training with like Lockie and he was just going on about his gravel race and I just like switch off when he said it was like 700 <laughs> okay. So yeah. I wasn't really, he just, he, he just sort of mentioned it a couple of times and I was like, oh, sweet, that's cool. Like, good luck. <laughs> yeah. And um, then my friend Dave Smith, who lives here, he, um, he had like a saddle saw, so he hadn't been training and he's like, oh, I've got this like, I'm gutted I can't do this Badlands thing. And I'm like, what the hell is that? I'm like, oh, I think that's like what Lockie's been on about, but like, I'm not sure. And then Dave's just like, oh, you should do it, man. And I'm like, oh yeah, when is it? And he's like, oh, it's in like four days. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll do it. Just kind of like joking. Yeah. Like, and you know, he just sent me this email and he's like, yeah, the organizer's like, change your name, you're in. And I was like, fucking hell, like shit. <laughs> yeah. And then so I, um, I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. And then I was like, well, like why not you know yeah like, i've got nothing else on so i just went and rented a bike and just like went around town like borrowing stuff off people for like three days like bags just, and everything yeah yeah just like not like having no idea what to take um and like how much food or just i had no idea and like i'm always getting lost as well man like so for me this thing was like a problem yeah like, and, and like the longest ride i'd ever done was like 200 k's like Jeez. 220 k's and what was the so, total in this it was like it's going to be like it was kind of like i was entering the unknown and like yeah. like he had booked the flight home for like the thursday or whatever it was and i was just like i'm just not going to book one because like, i don't know when i'm going to be back <laughs> and, um, yeah so yeah went to badlands and um it was actually kind of nice because it was like Cause you organize everything yourself it was kind yeah. of like um you didn't have some like annoying meeting with the ds and the team that night like you just run your own show so i just sort of like oh we want to go to this restaurant or like we'll go to the supermarket and get this and that and you could eat what you want do what you want it was kind of just refreshing and then it was like also like the more you prepare like that's just going to help you rather yeah. than like some guy telling you what to do sort of thing and um yeah so (laughs) i didn't even have like the proper maps on my garmin like i was so unprepared and um yeah so that's sort of how it came about doing it um and then it was just a ride (laughs) yeah i was about to say how many up and downs did you have because i feel like i think like the longest trip i've done was probably close to like 360k and i rode I think it was more than that. It was actually 500k. It was 500k's, and I, I rode, and I didn't really realize how many ups and downs you have. Like, mm. at like hour six, you like start to crack, and you're just like, "Fuck me!" Like, I'm not even halfway in. Yeah. And then, and then hour like nine, you're like, "Oh, okay, I'm back at it." And then the last long haul, you start to crack. So, how many ups and downs did you have? Because I mean, what is it like? It's like 2,000 miles or something like that, right? um i did a bit extra <laughs> so it was yeah. like i think for me it was like 740k and like sixteen thousand meters of climbing jesus bearing, bearing in mind like your bike's like 100 kilo yeah but it was it's kind of like that classic thing like like when you're in the on the mountain bike and you're like you can you know when you're just in one of those moods and you're like fully cracked and you're like walking your bike or something and then like five minutes down the road you can like ride the rest and then you're at the at the shop and you're like totally fine when you're at the shop and you're like 
I didn't really know what I was worried about back there. Yeah. But um, yeah, with Badlands, like, I guess you kind of form what you think it's going to be in your head, like, because it's just the unknown. Yeah. And um, so you have like your worries, like, like my big concern was, my biggest concern was actually just getting lost. And um, <laughs> when we started the race, it was like, we're in this group for a while. And I was just like, I, my maps weren't even working. Like I didn't even, I didn't have maps. I said it's pre trial, but that wasn't even on. And I was just like, well, I just can't get dropped because I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. So I was like, for like eight hours, I think I was with Lockie, just like 200 meters behind him. Just like, I think he went right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like, like you got to understand it's like fully like, um, I mean, you're, you're going down stuff you wouldn't believe you're going down. Like, you'd be like, there's no way the course goes here. And it does. Yeah. Like you'd be on the beach or like some, yeah, it's just crazy. So anyway, that was like a big concern. And um, I kind of got the maps sorted to like a rideable state as in like, I actually had the correct map after like, God knows how long. That's why my ride was in two because I had to like try and reload this thing. But basically, um, yeah, my big concerns was like getting lost and also just like the lack of sleep. Yeah. Um, and then, did you see anything? Did you have any hallucinations or anything crazy? Yeah. Like, oh, um, shit. <laughs> so it was kind of like, um, like once, once we got started and it was all fine and like the first like eight hours actually goes pretty quick as weird as that sounds. Cause you just know you're like, you're in a different mindset. Cause you just know it's going to be forever. And, um, and it's kind of like, you're almost, um, you're almost kind of at war and it's like the world, the outside world's not a thing anymore. And it's just like, you've just got like, all you have to do today is write A to B and that's yeah. it. Where, but you don't know where that A to B is going to be. But so like the first day I like stayed with Lockie for probably like eight hours or something. And I was just kind of like on my own and like doing my thing. And like, I had these <laughs> pretty shit lights that lasted like half the first night. But you just go through this list of problems. So it'll be like, um, the first problem was like, oh, this 90K section of no water. So like your biggest problem is just like no water. And then Jeez. like, then you'll get to the town of water and then it's like, okay, now my problem's like, uh, I don't know how long my lights are gonna last. or I don't know how much food I've got or like, and you just kind of rotate depending on what's going on. So just um, a problem every like 90K or so. Like a big problem. Just like if you run out of problem, water. like it depends what it is yeah. <laughs> but um yeah i got through the first night and i was like planning on sleeping like three or four hours but i slept like an hour <laughs> actually i went to this hostel like in this random town and this dude just like opened the door like fully naked like this fat european just like <laughs> checking off of me and i was just like uh like i can't stay there but um yeah i slept like an he hour probably would have let you stay for free though man <laughs> yeah but i would have taken the, the opportunity man honestly <laughs> but um yeah the first night wasn't actually too bad i was kind of surprised myself just like fully rode through the night and just kind of like hiking random stuff just like hoping you're on course yeah um but yeah that was yeah getting the first day done was actually like pretty good um but then you go through like waves when you're like man like i literally can't ride anymore like i'm gonna have to stop for a sleep for 10 minutes like you just can't keep going and then you kind of just like push through for five minutes and you almost just like reset and you're like no i'm good now and you'll go for like another six hours before it hits you again jeez so it's kind of just like like that because like for a normal person like it's hard to understand how you can not sleep you know that's what i struggled with going into yeah. it but you could you just do it like your body just knows it has to um so well, it's, yeah, it's like, kind of like a fight or flight. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's like your body just knows it doesn't have a choice. Um, so would you do something like that again? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> the, fa the thing is when you're, when you're in it, you're like, when, when stuff yeah, starts going it. wrong, it's like, it's super difficult. It's like, you just think like, oh man, like I don't want to do this anymore and blah, blah, blah. But then when you finish, you're like on this like massive high for quite a while, kind of like yeah. a week. You just like really, really appreciate everything. Just like, oh my God, a glass of water. Yeah. Or like, I can just sleep there. And just all that kind of stuff. You're just so like, even food, you're just so grateful. And it's kind of sucks because after like a week, it kind of runs out and you go back to being like, a norm, like just normal about everything. So I think like I definitely want to do like, 
I think you can't do too many, but maybe like one or two a year would be cool. But like definitely a different one because I think half the challenge is like just like doing a different one and not sort of knowing what you're in for. Yeah, so so you know the guy better than I do, but like because you train with him, rode with him, whatever, uh, Lachlan Morton. But it seems like it seems like those actually bring him fitness, and he does a fuck ton of them. Um, how do you think it did for you on the fitness side of things? Because you already made the comment where he's like, I don't know if I could do two or three or more in a year. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you feel um, like your fitness and form were like kind of after that? Uh, the first thing you have to understand is like Lockie's a freak. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, he's mental. He's he seems normal. mental. Like, yeah. And he can probably get away with doing like definitely more than anyone else. But yeah, he's just, and like, I've never met someone who just genuinely enjoys riding his bike as much as him. Yeah. Like he really, really just loves riding. Um, <laughs> Cause like before it, he's like to me, man, do, do you want to just ride home after this? And I'm like, bro, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> How long would that have been? The ride home was like 1200K. Um, Jesus Christ. So it was longer than the race. Yeah, he, well, he, we were going to do it over a few days. Well, he was planning to, but I was like, no, I'm, I'm not about that. But um, yeah, <laughs> so he, he could definitely do a few more. But he was insane just for like, like with that race, like the last, um, the last ascents, like this mountain, and you're going like eight count hour, it takes about, I think it's like over six to eight hours. Jeez. And um, like when I started it, I started kind of at the perfect time. Um, but I remember I was like talking to my friend and I was like, yo, so I'm doing like eight can hour. Like, can you see where my dot is? Cause you have like a dot watcher. Um, and like how far I am from the top and like, how long do you think it would take me? And I just remember telling him, telling me a bit like I've got five hours to go. I was like, bro, it's not possible. Like I've only got two Snickers. Like I'm done. Like I can't, I can't yeah. do that on two Snickers. And so I had to like steal this, um, steal this bread from these runners. Like, I felt real bad for it, but it's just like, you just got to do what you got to do, you know? Like, I wouldn't have made it. <laughs> but what was insane was like, I got to the top and it was actually like pretty cold. Um, yeah. And it's like, this, it's like a gravel climb to 3,200, I think. But like, Lockie, I found out Lockie did his at night, which is like, if you saw this climb, it's insane. And like, at the top's like, all this single track. And if you get it wrong, you're kind of like, you're probably not going to come home. <laughs> like, you're just oh, off man. the side of this mountain. Yeah. And um, yeah, he did his at night and did like, he didn't even sleep for the whole, um, the whole thing. Like he had, I think he had 19 minutes off the bike um, over like 42 hours. And he like jet washed his bike in that time. I'm like, dude, I have more than that on like my one hour spin. <laughs> yeah, jeez. But yeah, he's, he's insane. And I think definitely for him, um, yeah, like, for the Giro, he has, he has did a super good job for the team. Um, and probably like, yeah, getting back into like a European stage race, he has definitely, uh, definitely fit enough. Um, but yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's a hard one because you sort of don't know how much it takes out of you for a while. Because like, you yeah. can have a bad day on the bike and you're like, is that from that like, crazy thing I did? Or am I just like having a bad day? Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. No, but that's that's insane, man. Like, I think the the thing you have to understand with him too is like, you kind of don't do them to get fitness. Like, you yeah, know, I don't like think you, you can. Never, you never kind of thinking like, oh man, this is gonna make me good. Like at the next race, it's kind of like you just do it to like see what comes. Well, see, like, I had this idea of like thinking like I had this idea like I'm gonna think about this in the race and that that in the race and blah blah blah. But in the end, you actually just end up super busy with like your own problems at the time. Yeah. Whereas it's like, like I had no chain loop, man. So I was using sunscreen and it just fully like corroded my chain. So then I was just like thinking about that for ages and like <laughs> just, just stuff like that. Um, so you don't actually have a lot of time to think like, oh, I wonder like if my house plant's alive. <laughs> or like, yeah. You just don't even think about it kind of stuff. Well, so it's, um, it's and that's what I was saying. Like, I feel like with, with um with Lachlan it, it seems like he need he almost needs to do those big events mm. for his mental like just for his like sure. just to go clear his head like not to think like he's not thinking about the Giro he's not no. thinking about any of that shit like he's literally just thinking about 
the ride in the current moment. He's not even really thinking about the FKT or whatever. Like he's literally just thinking. Oh, and, about he does, he, and he genuinely doesn't care about that yeah. kind of stuff. Like, yeah, he's definitely um, like riding is like super good for his mental state, you know, like, like all of us, but, um, but it's on a different <laughs> level. Funny, him, Cause like when you get back and you talk to like your average cyclist, they'll be like, Oh, was there like, how much prize money did you get for second? And you'd be like, Oh, none. And they're like, what? There's no prize money. And you're like, no, nah, that's like kind of missing the point of the whole, the whole event. Like, was there a yeah, prize money like, for first? No. Nah, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no, there's and no, money. Like there's the no whole, money. You kind of like, if you were doing it for the money, you just wouldn't, it's not like you wouldn't do it. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. And what's also cool was like, the best part about it was like, um, because you have to dot watch it, we're like, and we knew like the course was insane. Once I finished, we were just like, oh, I wonder who's going to like crest the mountain at night. And there'll be like a few people doing it and you're just like feeling so bad for them. Yeah. Um, but like the best part for me was like the next day when you'd had like a bit of a sleep and we could just like laugh about the course. Like they'd be like, cause like we're kind of going through the same stuff. Um, but Lockie's phone cleared itself, so he didn't, we couldn't talk, but it'd be like, there's, there was this one section for like 20K when you're just like going into the beach and then out of the beach. And you're just like doing like a million watts through the sand or pushing your bike and you're like, is this like, am I on the course? Like surely like no one else is doing this. And then like you're finished with Lockie, be like, oh, did you do the sand part? I'm like, yeah, like do you reckon anyone else did it? And then like <laughs> as soon as people start coming in, like you can kind of like share the course with each other. Yeah. Which was like super, super nice. Um, but yeah, it's, it'd be one of those things like you do another one, you just, you just be like, why did I do this? Like, I forgot how terrible this was. No, but yeah. Then, once you finish, it's like, yeah, it's really, really good. So, did you take any time on? Did you have to take any time off the bike, like for, for a few days or how did it um, work? Lachlan was ready to ride home. So, I'm assuming he didn't take much time off. He didn't take much time off. <laughs> yeah. I think we just mountain biked a lot after that. Ah, uh, yeah, just cruise. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. And yeah. And so you actually, you recover pretty quick. Actually, it's more just sort of like, yeah, you probably can't do like huge power for a while. Yeah. So this is one of those conversations that I've been having with a lot of athletes on the on the podcast, where it's like, I mean, this year, this year, I think to be pro is either one or the other. It's either super nice or super shit, because like. Like, I mean, for a guy like me, like, you know, I, my goal is team pursuit, the Olympic Games, like, that's what it was. We didn't make it yeah. to the Olympic Games. So 2020 was already off to a rocky start for me, like, mentally, right? Like, it's like, what a, you know, I have no team. I have nothing, like, to really train for. Like, everybody's prepping for the Games. And then, but to have that time to just kind of refresh, like, there was no pressure to go to an event. There was no pressure to do anything and it like just to be home and not live out of a suitcase was nice so how's that yeah. kind of been for you like what do you think on that front um yeah totally and i think the people that struggle will be like um people that are sort of uh, like um, almost doing it more for a job rather than just like the love of cycling like i think yeah. one thing i've noticed this year is like um, how much I just really enjoy cycling. Like, yeah. even now, like, I mean, I've got nothing going, but I've, I've, like, last two days, I've just done, like, five hours on the mountain bike. But no one's making me do that. Like, I just want to do that just for myself. Yeah. Um, so it's been kind of nice for sort of realizing, like, how much I really like cycling. Yeah. And it's almost like once you take away, like, uh, the worry about teams and, whatever else it's like that's what's kind of cool about these um ultras it's like those events are always there like anyone can enter you don't need to be pro you can work full time you can do what you want so it's like if you like cycling you can do that and you don't need to have a team you don't need to have a sponsor you can just do it yeah it's kind of nice knowing that that's always there but at the same time like like i've been watching um some of the races like when i was watching the Giro, i was like man it would be a filthy day and i'd be like man i missed that like i really yeah. miss as much as we complain about it and oh man gotta go to belgium whatever like there's definitely the element that everyone loves it like well yeah it's like surface, you know? the hotel the dinners after like it 
you know, you kind of all come together and it's kind of, I think it's kind of like what you and Lachlan went through after Badlands where it's just like, you can sit down and be like, dude, you remember that section? Like it was nuts. Like where were you at that section, you know? And so I think, I think that plays a huge part into that as well. Um, but yeah, man, so I don't, I don't want to keep you all day. So I got, I got a few more questions for you. Um, but, um, you know, one question I have for you is like, I guess, what's your thoughts, you know, now that you've done an event, cause you were kind of like me, I, I, I had that comment and I guess in 2017, 2018, when gravel started to become big in America. And like, to me, I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, these are just a bunch of dudes who can't, like can't race. They don't want to race and yeah. they're wasting their time out here doing 300 mile yet. They'll go ride 300 miles, but yet they can't train for a bike race. Yeah. And then you go do the event and you're just like, okay, all right, I'm out of my element. I'm in a different, different zone. Um, what's your kind of, what's your kind of thought process on a lot of these teams? So like EF, um, I guess is the only real team that's, that's doing it, but what's your thought? And I guess Trek was going to do it this year, but what's your thoughts on teams like doing that alternative or gravel calendar or bike packing calendar? What's your thoughts on that? Do you think that's like the um, way of the future? I think racing is always going to be like, have its own place you know and it's what a lot of there's like this whole group of people over here that are like racing but then um even on some of the videos like i don't normally read comments much but i had a look at the badlands um i just read a few of the comments and it would be like hey like i have zero interest in pro cycling but i love this like what you're doing here and um so there's definitely two sides to it but i think what Lockie doesn't get enough credit for maybe is sort of to do these events but then still race at such a high level yeah um, and i think it's great because it's bringing like a lot more awareness to some of these bike packing races that that community knows about but the whole cycling world doesn't and vice versa you know like i, I bet there's some like bike packers now that are like hey there's that guy that was in the race like he's it's pretty cool he's doing that so it's i think it's great for both of them and um it's also cool just like to be like, I kind of rate someone that's just like an all round bike rider that can like race the mountain bike and then go and do this race and do that. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it is the way of the future actually. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Sort of whatever team, I guess it's hard. Like you say, with COVID this year, it's sort of hard to know, but like the amount of people riding a bike now that can, like you say, gravel is just gone crazy. Um, so yeah. I hope so. And like rides like um, Dirty Kanza. I saw they yeah. just changed your name today. What's it called now? Uh, what did it literally just change it? Was it like Unbound, I think is what it's Unbound. called? Yeah, Unbound. Yeah. I think rides like that that happen like every year, that it's only going to just keep growing because people are into it. And it's yeah. also super refreshing. But yeah, it, it is. And I did my first gravel race. Like, I guess that was my first race back after the World Cups. And, you know, you go from doing a, you know, four minute you know, effort to doing a eight hour effort. And it's just a completely different mental capacity. And uh, that's the longest hundred miles I'd ever done in my life at that time. Um, yeah. It was like riding through peanut butter mud on a gravel bike. And literally my bike <laughs> almost, I'm a big dude and my bike almost yeah. weighed as much as me, but it was crazy. Cause I was just like, how the fuck did I end up here? And then I'm like, I'm going to be here next year. Like this What's great too, I find about those ones is like, there'll be stuff you're like worried about at the start. Like, oh man, like lost a bit of time there. And yeah, yeah. As the event goes on, you're like, holy shit, that did not matter at all. Yeah, like, <laughs> like that fully, time did not matter. I'm fully like, just blown up now and I'm losing, I'm, I'm just hemorrhaging time everywhere. Like I'm losing hours now. It didn't matter. Yeah. So, but, and so my last question, so I never a lot of podcasts they'll send like free questions that they always ask, but I never send this question because I kind of want it to be authentic and a little bit on the spot. And maybe people will catch on to it if more people start listening to it. But I do this segment where essentially um, I ask you if you could have a cup of coffee with one person dead or alive, who would it be? And how would you take your coffee? Oof. Um, and if you don't want coffee, cause like some people are like, oh, I'd like to have a, a scotch with insert name here, or I'd yeah. like to have a, a beer with insert name here, or I don't even drink coffee. So I'd like to have tea with whoever. 
Like, it could be probably anyone. like Muhammad Ali, I'd say. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So how would you take your coffee? I'd just copy him. because I'd be Yeah, I just like, copy him whenever <laughs> he gets. It's like, it's like 9 a.m. And he's like, yeah, I'll take a beer. And he's like, I'll have a beer too. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, like I'm, I'm sort of like the mainstream flat white guy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it'd be super interesting. Because I find, I find boxing super cool for the fact that like, even if you win, you just know going in, you're going to get your head pummeled in. It's kind of like cycling. It's like, this is going to really hurt. Yeah. But, but anyway. Yeah, it's a, it is a funny thing, like, because, you know, that you mentioned that because we were having this conversation about training and like, somebody was asking me the other day, because I was like, kind of like limping around. And it was yeah. just because like, I've been doing these big blocks. And they're like, you know, I thought you rode a bike for like, you know, health, you know, and quality. And I was like, yeah, but like, once you get to a certain point, like, you start doing badlands, you start doing these big yeah. things. It's like, it's not health anymore. It's just like to see how far you can push the body without dying. And I feel like yeah. boxing is that that upper echelon of just like, oh yeah, we do one to two of these a year. And we're yeah. literally going in knowing that we're gonna get our face win or lose, we're gonna get punched in the face. Yeah, that's a big misconception about professional sport. Like it's not good for you. As like yeah. rugby players, you know, you're not it's not healthy. No way. Like yeah. healthy is like walking around the block or doing like an hour like spin at the gym. What we do is like stressful, hard work, and it's like Oh, we love it, but it's like, it's not healthy. <laughs> it's not healthy at all. It's not healthy at all. Well, anyways, man, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate the conversation. Guys, I'll put the link in the description below for uh, Hayden's social media, as well as the Badlands documentary. Uh, other than that, thank you guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and cheers.